All right, welcome back to the channel, everyone. I know it's been a minute since I did a Envision Studio tutorial, so hopefully you guys enjoy this. I'm feeling a bit inspired by the show I'm watching on Netflix called Altered Carbon. It's a sci-fi show and there's a lot of outer space elements and it kind of inspired me to get in the studio and just polish my design skills a bit. Um, and I've been playing around with uh, using parallax motion a lot in my designs. I don't know if you guys watched my last video, but I talked about some techniques you can use to create depth in your flat digital product environments even without using things like drop shadows. So think of this video as a bit of an add-on to that one. So I mocked up a few screens here just to illustrate this effect. And I mocked up a little solar system here. We have the sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. It's like a little planet carousel and we have like these indicator dots to indicate which planet we're looking at in the carousel. And then we have the actual content page. So the idea here is that the user is going to tap on Mars and all this content is going to slide up from the bottom. And it's almost going to look like we're inside of the Mars planet. So I'm actually just going to get rid of this guy for now. We don't need it yet. But yeah, this is how I sort of set up these screens in advance. And I can just expand this artboard just to show you how I position my layers in advance. So as you see, as we swipe in this carousel, the planets actually scale up and you know Mars is really big down here because in the second state Mars is actually going to get closer and closer to the user but it's out of view but um, I just put it down here to show the differences between these two states now if you guys have been watching my videos you know that the way studio sort of animates is it's going to look for similar elements on the different screens and it's going to animate the difference between them and studio then allows you to customize these transitions between the two screens but one thing to note, you just have to make sure that all of your layers are named the same. So for example, like Earth on this artboard is named Earth on this artboard. So that way Studio is just gonna animate the difference between those similar layers. So one other thing you guys might be interested in is where I got these planet assets. I actually used Envato Elements. It's a really great resource for graphic assets. I have an Envato account, so as long as you have an Envato account, you can download as many assets as you want. I'm not being paid to say this or anything. I just think it's a great resource. Also, just one visual design thing I did is I added like these little scrim layers on top of these planets just to give them a little more depth. And I wanted to create the illusion that the front of these planets is getting lit up by our light source here, which is the sun. So it's just a little linear gradient. Um, that I put on top of each of these planets. So it's like a black that starts at 100, and then it starts at 100% opacity, and then this point is 0% opacity. So it just creates a little more depth in this flat environment. So one other thing I actually wanna do is, cause I don't think I did this yet, is I wanna put each of these titles on each of the different screens so I can actually customize the transitions between them. So I'm gonna paste this Mars title on this screen and just fade it out. And then here, I'm gonna take the Earth title, paste it on this screen, and then fade it out. But everything else, I think, should be on both screens. So now Studio is gonna do a lot of the work for us in animating the difference between these two states. So as a user, I wanna be able to swipe vertically on these planets to get from planet to planet. So in this Artboard 1, let's just create a link by hitting C on our keyboard, connect to screen two. And this is gonna be a swipe down We'll select motion and I'll just keep 0.8 seconds as the duration. And one thing to note, when I'm prototyping, I usually make the duration take a bit longer than it actually would in production just to sort of get the point across and show the effect. Usually like when we're pitching something to a client or a stakeholder, sometimes it helps to overdo the interaction a bit just for the effect. So let's hit save. And then to get from two to one, we'll actually just use a swipe up gesture. We'll use the same timing. And let's just preview this now to see what we have. So it's already looking pretty slick and notice how these planets are scaling up and down accordingly as they get closer and closer to the user. So pretty sweet. But I think we could take this effect one step further and make it a bit more dynamic. So let's head to the edit timeline and customize this interaction a bit. So right now they're all sort of scaling up and down at the same exact rate but maybe we want to delay each subsequent planet. So let's take the Earth planet and the little number there, and let's just like delay it a bit in the timeline. Just give myself a bit more space. 
And then we'll do the same thing with Venus, just delay it a bit after the Earth. And Mercury, delay it a bit after Venus. So we get this slight stagger and it's just making this feel a little more realistic and a little more dynamic. So maybe we even make it a little more dramatic by delaying them like so. There we go. And let's do the same thing on the way back. So let's edit this guy. So on the way back, we want to delay this guy a bit after Mercury. So we won't delay this guy, but we'll delay this set, then this set, and then this set. And something weird's happening here. What's happening with this four? Oh, I have to delay Mars. Uh, where are you, Mars? Mars and four. There we go. So now when we swipe, we always want to preview with the actual interaction that we're using just to get a feel for it. It's a little more dynamic, right? It's a little more different than your standard page swiping or page scrolling. Cool, so that's the first step. So now that our carousel is working, we actually want to make a selection. So for the sake of this prototype, we're going to select the Mars planet and we're going to transition to screen three. So let's head into the layer list here and we'll select Mars. We'll create a link to screen three and we'll have motion selected. We'll do point at second duration again, hit save. But one thing I wanna make sure is that all the layers that need to be on both screens are on both screens. So let's take this nav bar and these tabs here, just paste them on a screen one and they're gonna be faded out initially. And then I want this one to actually slide in from the bottom. So I'm gonna paste this group here, which is named content, and we'll just paste it on screen one. And we'll bring this all the way to the bottom. So this one's gonna slide in from the bottom, like so. And now I just wanna take all of these planets, like so, we'll take these dots as well and paste them on a screen three. And then I'm just gonna bump them down in the layer list. So we can actually just drag them all the way to the bottom, like so. And now let's just preview what we have before we do anything. So let's go to the edit timeline. Whoops, wrong transition. Let's select the Mars interaction, go to the edit timeline. Cool, so right off the bat, before we even mess with the planets, we have this nav fading in, we have the tabs fading in, and this sliding in from the bottom. Cool. But now we can get really crazy. So when we make the selection, I want this Mars planet to slide up a bit to around, maybe around here. I'm just gonna take its opacity down very slightly so it's not as jarring to the user, but we still get a sense that we're part of this Mars planet. Very cool, so that's the first step. So let's go back to the edit timeline, preview that. Cool. And we're gonna mess with the timing a bit just to create a little more separation and a little more depth between these elements. So now to create this parallax effect, basically for those of you who don't know what the parallax effect, I don't know if you guys can hear this, but I just triggered my Alexa in the room. <laughs> I don't know if I said Alexa, but that's so funny. Let me turn you off. <laughs> Shut up, Alexa. Um, basically how this parallax effect works is that objects that are closer to the user will appear to move faster. So there's a few things we can do to help create this effect a bit. So basically I want this Mars planet to appear that it's moving the fastest relative to the other planets. So to create that, I'm just going to make sure that the Mars planet moves a greater distance in the same amount of time relative to the other planets. So 
the second fastest moving planet is going to be Earth, right? So what I'm going to do is go back to that screen, find the Earth planet, and I'm going to move it up a little bit, but I'm not going to move it up as much as I move the Mars planet, just so it doesn't appear to move as fast as the Mars planet. And then I'm going to do the same thing with, with Venus, although I'm actually going to move Venus downwards a bit to create this effect. So let's find Venus. And we'll just move it downwards, maybe like 30 pixels. And then we'll take Mercury and do the same thing, move it down maybe like 20 pixels. So let's just see what we have so far. We can always adjust this in a second. So you see sort of what's happening, right? As I scrub, we have Mars moving the fastest because it's covering a greater distance, followed by Earth, followed by, what is that? Venus. But the Mercury one needs to move a bit more just to be a little more visually consistent with the rest of this animation. So let's go back to that end screen and we'll take Venus, or sorry, we'll take Mercury and just move it down a little more. Let's see what's happening. Whoops, wrong transition. Let's find Mars, edit timeline. So that's looking a lot better. See how the planet's sort of like we're getting this like change of perspective because they're it's almost like flattening out. This carousel sort of flattening out visually. Very sweet. And now these numbers here, I just want to fade them out like right away almost. I think it's going to little, look a little cleaner if I do that. So Oh. I'm stupid. I have to actually fade them out here on screen three. So let's find these numbers. Take their opacity down. Let's head back to the Mars interaction. See how those are just fading out like instantly. Then I also want these dots to be faded out. So let's go back to the end state. Let's find the dots. Fade those guys out, go back to the interaction. So let's find the dot layer and just get those out of the way. So what I'm doing here in this timeline is I'm decreasing the time it takes to go from state one to state two. So the only difference between the dots in state one to state two was their opacity. They faded all the way out. So I'm decreasing the time it takes to do that. Very cool. So that's looking a lot better already. Now I'm gonna actually go back to the screen three. I'm gonna take all the planets except Mars and just fade them out. So is that everything? Yep. And again, let's preview. It's a very iterative process working in studio. But you see how clean that's starting to look? We get this really sweet like tilt shift parallax effect here. And now one thing I wanna do is I'm actually gonna delay the content a bit. I'm actually gonna change its easing to ease out. So generally objects that enter a screen, we wanna decelerate them. So that's sort of what this graph looks like. So we use an ease out easing to do that. And now I'm just going to mess with the timing a bit. So something like that is looking pretty good to me. Again, we're just creating these subtle time differences between each layer. So like this content layer and the Mars layer, there's a slight time difference, which creates even more depth in this experience. Now these tabs here in the nav bar, I'm just going to delay those as well. So I want them to sort of fade in last. Maybe even more. And 
and I don't know about you guys, but that's looking pretty sick. And one thing I want to do, actually, there's some weird, like, let me expand this so you can see. This Mars planet, since I decreased its opacity a bit, you can sort of see through it. You can see Earth through it a bit. So what I'm going to do just to this Mars planet is I'm going to expand the properties of Mars and just mess with the opacity property. And I'm going to delay the time it takes to fade out. So that way it's, we don't see Earth through the Mars planet. So that's looking pretty sick. So let's go back to the canvas now. And we want to be able to get back to screen one. So let's create an interaction to get to screen one. We'll just have motion selected. We'll do point eight again. Whoops. So now we kind of just want to do the same thing in reverse, but this time we'll have these guys fade out first and we'll just have, we'll just decrease those, the time it takes for them to do that a bit. And then, so the first thing I want to leave the screen is the content followed by Mars. So let's have the Mars planet fade out after the content followed by this stuff. And then last but not least, I'll have these numbers and these dots fade in. And maybe this guy will have Actually, that's fine. I was gonna say we can maybe delay this title here, but I think I messed up my, my layer naming, but it's fine <laughs> for this tutorial sake. And actually, let's just have the sun come in a bit later. There we go. So did I trigger this with the tap? Yep. So now we can preview our prototype in its entirety. So we get this really sweet dynamic swiping. Now we can make a selection and we can go back. So we've created a lot of depth in this experience just using animation and the way we delay certain elements and the way they come in. So it's a really awesome dynamic experience here. So hopefully this gives you guys a sense of how to use motion to create depth in your designs. I'm gonna link this project file below if you guys wanna play around with it. But yeah, if you guys found this helpful, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up Subscribe for more studio tutorials and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.